Zero Accounting Software 2023, reversing entry related to loan payable, breaking out the short-term and long-term portions. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this, or ideally some combination between the two, giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive, and you're gonna need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short-term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might wanna come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage, going into the company file we started up in a prior presentation, Get Great Guitars, duplicating some tabs to put those reports in like we do every time, right click on the tab up top so we can duplicate it. We're going to right click the tab up top again and again, duplicate. Back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down, balance sheet report. This is a comparative balance sheet. If you don't have that one, you can open the standard one. Tab into the right, same thing, accounting drop-down, income statement, it being a comparative one, which if you don't have, you open the standard. Back to the middle tab, the balance sheet, noting that we're doing adjusting entries, which are entries as of the end of the period, either month or year, to make the financial statements correct as of that time frame in accordance to whatever kind of accounting system being used in our case, that being the accrual accounting system, our cutoff date is February 28. Now, last time we did an adjusting entry related to the loan payable, breaking out the short-term and long-term portion of the loan payable, which note is not exactly like the classic adjusting entry because a classic adjusting entry has a timing element to it, typically having a balance sheet account and an income statement account. But this is an adjusting entry in the sense that from the bookkeeping side of things, it makes sense to, to put everything in one account so that we can then track that account as we make payments, tying it out to the amortization table with each payment that we make. And then periodically at the end of the year or the end of the month, we break out the, the short-term and long-term portion for external reporting needs so that we can comply with, with whatever reporting needs we need so that we can use the financial statements for our own internal purposes. Because uh, note that, the reason this is important, obviously, uh, for external, maybe not so obvious, but for external reporting is that we want to be able to compare our short-term liabilities to our short-term assets to make sure that we have enough current assets in order to be paying off the current liabilities. So uh, it, you could end up in a situation like 
companies that have a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of loans or a lot of equipment, like a construction company, for example, often look good if you look at them from a total asset versus liability standpoint. However, uh, they could still have cash flow problems because all of their assets are are in t- fixed assets. The classic example of this is like a farm. If you look at a f- some farms, you could say, well, they look great because th- their asset, you know, their equity looks good. Their assets are a lot higher than their liabilities, but they've got all of their assets in the farm, clearly, so that they can help to generate revenue because that's what that's the things that are generating the revenue. So you could still have cash flow kind of problems. That's why you you want to be breaking out short term and long term so you can see if you have the short term capacity to pay off the current liabilities that are coming due uh, within the next year and that's the that's the concept of it so from a bookkeeping standpoint we we break that out periodically so that we can use it in that case now you also for a small business might be doing this just for taxes and for taxes, remember that you might not need to break out the short-term and long-term portion if you're a sole proprietorship in the United States because you just really need the income statement for tax reporting uh, purposes. But if you're if an S corporation, corporation, LLC, you might need to enter the balance sheet and break out the short-term and long-term portion possibly for the tax needs uh, as well. So now that we've broken it out, what we want to do is put it back together again in a reversing entry because if we did not do that it would cause problems because going forward what's going to happen we broke out according to our amortization table this is what we did last time we said this is where we stand we broke out the short-term portion which is this amount and the long-term portion which is where we would be after another year's worth of payments if I continue making another payment right here, then I'm not gonna basically be able to tie my balance out to the one account related to my loan payable if I'm trying to tie everything out to the amortization table. So uh, what, what I'd like to do is reverse this so I can put it back together in one account and not mess up the accounting process so they can, they can continue to make their loan payments and have one account matching the amortization table. So last time we did an adjusting entry like this. Uh, let's go ahead and find that adjusting entry and then we'll just reverse it. So if I go into, let's just go into the Chase account here and we should be able to find the adjustment that we made. Scrolling down, here's our manual adjusting entry. Let's go into that and there it is. We debited the uh, loan payable on the short term for uh, uh, the 56 and uh, we credited the long term for the 56 so now we're just going to reverse that as of the first day following the adjusting entry march 1st all right so let's go back first here and i'm going to go back to the balance sheet and then i'm going to go to the first tab and we will go to the accounting drop down look at the reports we want to be opening up the journal report. Journal report, por favor, if you please. And we're going to then say we want to add a new journal. And I'm going to say it's just going to be a reversing entry. It's going to be as of the first day after the cutoff. So we're going to say this is going to be uh, Feb 28 was the cutoff, March 1st, the day after. Noting that in practice if we knew we were going to reverse it we could use the reversing option here which should generate the reversing entry automatically for us but here we want to kind of talk through why we would do the reversing entry so the reversing entry will simply do the opposite of what we did before so last time uh so let's take the 56 7 69 59 let me see if i can memorize that first of all 56759.69 5679 56769595956 there's a lot of 5679595976769595 oh my goodness i this is a dyslexifying number I'm telling you, they made this number on purpose just to c- confuse me. Five six seven six nine five nine 
five, six, seven, six, nine. That's it. That's it. Okay, so then we're going to say that this is going to be going to the long term. It's going to be the debit. Now, notice the easiest way to think about this is obviously to, to look at what we did last time and reverse it and, and not necessarily put the debit on top and the credit on the bottom. I'm doing that. I'm reversing it. I'm putting the debit on top and the credit on the bottom because there's only two accounts that are in affected. Uh, but just remember, as a general rule, when you do the reversing entries, because they're oftentimes kind of backwards in nature, the easiest thing to do is just look at what you did with the adjusting entry and then keep the accounts from top to bottom and just reverse the debits and credits. But here we go. Chase, this is the short term and there's the credit. So there's the debit, there's the credit. I think I went the right way on it. If I went the wrong way, I'll be able to figure it out and find it. So let's go ahead and save it. And then that looks good. Let's go into our balance sheet and update the big balance sheet. Scrolling down, rolling, rolling, rolling. And so now we have the breakout of the 13,108.54 as of the cutoff. And then we put it back to where it was, so the 69,878.13, which is the full amount according to our amortization table, so that the accountant department or us, when we're doing our normal transactions going forward, can, can easily just break out the interest in principal and tie into that loan balance without having to try to break out the balance every time going forward. If I drill down on that, we should see our journal entry, the manual journal. And so there it is. Uh, here it is right there, scrolling back up. And then the long-term portion should be gone. It should be gone. Oh man, what happened? Let's go back into my balance sheet. I went back too far or something. Que paso, man? What happened? Let's go back in here. And then scrolling down, rolling, rolling, rolling. And uh, the, the long term is there for uh, the cutoff. And then it's gone as of March because we put it back into the, uh, to the short, to the one account. All right, so there it is. Let's go to the next tab to the right and nothing happened to the income statement because this is not exactly an adjusted entry. We don't have that same kind of timing difference we typically have. It's all two balance sheet accounts, but still has that adjusting concept that we're doing it as of the end of the period. Let's hit the drop down. Let's open up our reports and let's take a look at, I'm just gonna run the report as of the whole year. So it includes our reversing entries. So I'm gonna say this will be trial balance and open that up dropping it down, dropping down the base beat, 2023, end of the year, update. So this is where we stand at this time. So if you tied out last time, but you're off this time, and notice I'm running, I'm, I'm including the reversing entries here because I'm just running the whole year. If you were on last time and you're off this time, then we put the, uh, the only change we made is we now put the loan back together again. Just like they, they couldn't do it with Humpty Dumpty because, but we did it with the loan. We put it back together again and it didn't take all the King's men. We did it ourselves. Uh, so in any case, there it is.